Uh, my last published book was a book called Walking Home, uh, which is a non-fiction account of a 260 mile walk I did along the Pennine Way in Britain. And I took no money with me and I gave poetry readings every night and I just passed a hat around and asked people to put in what they thought I was worth. So I was doing it as a, a modern day troubadour. I suppose, in some ways, I was testing the reputation of poetry, uh, whether or not people would consider coming out for a poetry reading you know, on a wet Wednesday in Wensleydale, um, and maybe testing my reputation as a poet. Um, up until 1995, I worked as a probation officer in Manchester, and I was quite interested in you know, thinking about how far I'd, I'd come in that time. Would poetry get me from a to B, could I exist on my wits? Um, you know, it was also an opportunity for spending time alone on the hills in contemplation. Um, although I, I didn't come back with as many poems as I thought I would do. Um, maybe I was just converting everything into, into non-fiction prose. I think I wrote four poems. Um, but that's, uh, you know, usually when I go out for a walk I come back with a poem, or at least an idea for a poem. So that, that was um, a pretty poor, um, a poor take for me really in, in, in three weeks. I, I think one thing that I discovered was that what, whichever part of my brain I need for writing poems, I also need for navigating, because uh, I got lost quite a few times. Um, so that, you know, I, I like to think of, of, of poems as daydreams, you know, I like to enter the daydream as a way of getting the writing going, but I, it, you know, it, it's wild and wet and windy up on those hills, and I just couldn't afford the luxury of thinking about poetry uh, when I was staring at a compass and a map and uh, you know, stressing about getting to the next place um, for shelter. That was really kind of heartwarming. Um, you know, I, I put an itinerary up on my website and I said, these are the places that I'm going to be on certain dates. If you will organize a poetry reading, I will come and do that for nothing, but can I stay in your house as well? And um, yeah, some of, the, some of these communities were only places of, uh, you know, 200 people, and occasionally there were 80, 90 people at the reading. Um, so yeah, it, it was very sort of satisfying. I, I never went without food or shelter or, or good company, uh, you know, people to, to talk to and swap stories. And occasionally people, after the reading would say, where, you know, where are you walking tomorrow? And they would come with me. And walking's a very sort of an intimate activity. You know, you, you, you're in close proximity, uh, your heart rate is slightly up. Uh, you, you end up telling people things about yourself. They tell you things about yourself. It, it was a good way of getting to know people and, and of course, get, getting to know the landscape as well. I write about everyday things. Um, I think of poetry as a kind of miniature art form and I, I hope to be you know, encountering um, the, the bigger issues and the bigger questions through looking at objects, items, experiences of, of everyday life. Um, I've always tried to write in an engaging way, not just a, a sort of specialist way. I, I'm not really interested in the idea of poetry as a, a linguistic code. I'm not really interested in poetry that tries to work out the DNA structure of language. You know, I, I'm a communicator, and that's what I was trying to do with, with people on, on that walk. Um, and, and the idea that, that people who aren't specialist readers can come out in an evening and get something from a poetry reading is, is very important to me. You know, without wanting to sort of sac sacrifice the, the dignity or, or the in integrity of, 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 of poetry itself. I think it is worth saying as well that poetry isn't just one thing. You know, it, 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 it might mean just one thing to, to people, but it, it isn't. It's a really broad church. You know, people are writing in completely different ways, right across the spectrum from um, stuff that's almost stand-up comedy to you know, the, the most obscure, avant-garde, experimental writing you, you could imagine. So, um, you, you can never really talk about poetry as, as if it's just one thing. Quite a few stories about getting lost. <laughs> I got lost on the second day, um, just went marching off into the hills in the wrong direction. Um, 
I got lost on a place called Cross Fell in the mist. Um, Cross Fell is the second highest peak in England outside the Lake District. And I'd, I'd been a little bit complacent about it. And quite often on these days you would set out and you'd just find yourself climbing into the, into the clouds. And I wandered around on the top of there for several hours uh, before I, I found a way off. And I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like climbing Everest or, you know, crossing the Gobi Desert. It's, it's not that kind of extreme adventure, but it is frightening up there. And, you know, people go up there and don't come back sometimes, um, you know, if, if, if they're not prepared properly. And, and, and I mean, look at me, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not intrepid, uh, you know, I'm a poet. Um, so uh, some of those stories got in there. A lot of other people's stories, you know, made it into the book. I found myself writing, I thought it would be a book about me and my relationship with the north of England. And I was thinking of the Pennine Way as this sort of boardwalk or gantry down the north of England where I could write about, uh, you know, the landscape and the topography and the communities. But I, I ended up writing mostly about other people and their stories and, and their lives. Um, so I, I, I think it, it became a very optimistic book about, you know, people are good. I haven't always believed that, but I, I found good people up there. Yeah, I, I suppose it, it, it is a travelogue, it's memoir, it's nature writing, it's, you know, there's some bits of lit crit in there, I write about Wordsworth, I write about the H. Lawrence. Um, I don't know what kind of book it is really, I don't know where it fits in the bookshelf in the bookshop. Uh, you remember bookshops, those things that we used to have where people went in and bought books. Um, do you remember books? Those things that people used to open and... Um, yeah, it's, um, I, I like books that are difficult to categorise. Publishers don't, <laughs> bookshops don't either. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's a bit of everything, it's done very well. Um, and I, it, it was called Walking Home because uh, I, I walk back towards the village where I was born, the walk ends there. And I'm, I'm going to do another walk this summer called Walking Away, which is sort of walking away from home in Cornwall to the very bottom toe end of, of Britain, to where the land stops at Land's End. And then I'm going to carry on into the sea as well, somehow. I haven't really figured that bit out yet. I suppose what happened was that you know people would walk with me during the day and they would tell me about their lives and tell me about you know why they were living in these particular places and some of the things that had happened to them and you know I just came across extraordinary individuals living quite extraordinary lives in not very extraordinary places and uh, their stories and their lives I just thought were more interesting than mine and the fact that they'd shared them with me, um, you know, it became part of the experience of the, of the walk. In fact, you know, when I, when I reconstruct the walk now in my mind, I think I reconstruct it through people rather than through the landscape. I remember on a certain day I walked with this particular person or I stayed at this particular person's house. Um, so it became like a, a kind of chain of, 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 of characters and individuals, you know, who who saw me across their parish and, and watched me, you know, wander into the next one. Well, um, I only live four miles from the village where I was born. You know, I, I haven't got very far, uh, really. So it was an opportunity to reconsider that upbringing uh, at a distance, and a distance that got shorter every day. So, I, you know, I was walking back to my upbringing and to the place where all my poems pretty much are set or, or, or have their beginnings and to the language and the dialect of, of that village. Um, so it was an opportunity to reflect on, on home as an idea. I think it's quite unusual these days, not just in Britain but pretty much everywhere, to, to, to live your life in the same place you know people are, are mobile people are uh, you know they travel f for work they but I, I've just stayed there I, I, I don't know why I, it was complacency to begin with um, and convenience but now it's become somewhere where I'm really firmly rooted and all my family live there and I, I think part of it is to do with you know I travel so much now uh, I, 
in a way that I, I never expected to when I became a writer. I thought becoming a writer would mean staying at home. But it, it, it's be, poetry's become a kind of passport for me. And I, 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 I travel a lot. And I think home's become somewhere to go back to, uh, you know, a fixed, solid base. And I really value that.